How's it going? Monday Morning Quarterback, episode 169. Uh, really excited to be back with you guys. We're going to be back every Monday night at 9 p.m. We're not live, but we wanted to be in this more primetime slot that worked better for folks. Um, so we're going to start every show by answering your questions and comments from the week before. So please comment if you want more detail on anything we're talking about, if you have a question, um, if it pertains to tonight's topic or any topic, um, any any question you have, just please uh, comment and we will definitely answer those. If you have an idea uh, for a Monday morning quarterback topic that you would like us to dive in depth on, please also comment those. If we use your idea, we'll uh, send you some free swag. Um, tonight we're using Crane Racing's question from when we posted about a month back. So DM us, we'll get you some uh, merch headed your way. And, uh, and tonight's topic is... How to check your suspension if you don't have a shock dyno, a torsion bar dyno, a spring raider. Um, so we'll go down on the shop floor and show you how we would go about doing those things. Um, and there's actually some really good good insight there and some things you can check um, if, if you don't have that type of equipment with you. Um, but we are going to kick off with some questions. Since we didn't have a show last week, I don't really have any questions to answer, but I went back through our last couple um, YouTube questions from uh, videos last year and, uh, and, and tech videos we've done, so we'll jump into those. The first one is in our squaring quarter midget video, we had a customer ask, why do you not square it with lead in the car? Um, and that's a good question. I know some uh, people and some chassis manufacturers run lead all the time. Um, in our particular application, uh, I didn't feel that to be totally necessary. Um, around here, most of the tracks we race have um, pretty sweeping corners. The track's very circular, um, but certainly places that have a straightaway and tighter corners, I can see um, a situation where you might run lead in those. Um, I just always try to comment on best practice from my experiences, and um, we were fortunate to win a lot of big quarter midget races, and we always ran a car square um, in those events. I can only think of once, in the 10 years we ran a quarter midget uh, with house drivers and then and then Hudson driving that we ever ran lead. Um, so that kind of answers that question. The next one came um, from a video where we explain how to read your shock dyno sheets. And the guy uh, was asking, I'm not sure if he was a sprint car midget, one of our core micro customers, or if he was a, like an off-road guy, but he's like, why are you guys looking at the three inch number? The quick answer to that question is when you're at the racetrack and people are talking real numbers, I have got 85 compression, 100 rebound, 99% of the time they're talking about their three inch per second number. Um, that's just kind of the universal language um, in our core markets, micros, midgets, sprint cars, even quarter midgets. Um, certainly us as shock tuners, um, higher end crew chiefs, chassis tuners, they're looking at a broader range of numbers, right? We're looking at your zero number on the left rear, one inch numbers, high speed numbers, um, but kind of the general number that the average racer talks about is your three inch per second number. Um, so that's why we had highlighted that in that video. Um, if you're on a higher level, um, you're tuning shocks, you're tuning race cars, you're, you're racing for a living, uh, I would, suspect that you're, you're looking at a lot more than just your three inch per second number, but that's a great avenue for people to start that are used to traditional valving numbers. Your three, four, five nomenclature that isn't a unit of measure and doesn't mean squat. Looking at your three inch per second numbers, learning those numbers, knowing what those numbers are when you make adjustments to your shock, that's a great uh, entry point. Third question is um, from a quarter midget build video that we did. Um, and let us know if you guys want to see more of those. That was a popular video. I'm getting ready to build a micro for Hudson. Maybe we should do a build video with that. Um, but the, on that video, the guy said, where did I get the studs that I use to replace bolts? <clears throat> so on Hudson's quarter midgets, um, I would get uh, Allen studs, um, I just ordered them from McMaster car, the length I needed, red lock tied them in, and then use a jet nut. So similar to like a, a one nut uh, bolt kit like you would use in a sprint car. Nobody makes them for quarter midgets, so I kind of just made my own. And it did help when 
you were in a thrash on the hot shoe trying to replace a radius rod or something because you can just zip that jet nut off with an impact and slide the new radius rod on. We took some pretty good hits over the years and only one time did I ever bend one of those studs. So a grade eight set screw, uh, red Loctite tied it in there, worked really well. So that's it for the questions uh, for today. We're gonna jump down to the shop, show you how to check your suspension system um, if you don't have a dyno, and then we'll come back up and close it out. So you don't have a shock dyno, but you wanna put your best foot forward and make sure your shocks are as good as you can check them without one. What are the steps to doing that? <clears throat> First thing I do is take the shocks off the car, make sure your spherical bearings are free. Um, when I compress the shock, I wanna feel for any tight spots or dead spots. Um, I'll twist the shaft on the way out. This will tell me if it catches anywhere, if the shaft is slightly bent at all. Um, upon that initial compression, if there's a dead spot, that could be a sign of uh, a loss of some oil. If it's a monotube shock and there's a dead spot on your initial movement, make sure it has gas pressure in it. Because if there's no gas pressure, you'll have a quarter inch or so of a dead spot. And what I mean by a dead spot is when you first start to compress it, it, compress it, it free falls and then catches. Should be a consistent rate all the way down. Uh, another question we get is I have my shock fully extended and the shaft wobbles. It's gonna wobble because you have eight, nine, 10 inches of shaft and it's only supported by a half inch bushing, right? So as you compress it down in the shock, that wobble goes away. You lose some leverage, you got more support inside the body. Um, so no matter what brand of shock you have, if you extend a long shock all the way out and you jerk on the shaft at the very top, you're gonna have a little bit of play. If, that, if there was no play there, um, through the range of travel, the shock would bind up. So that's totally normal. The other thing, um, when you're compressing that down, you're wanting to feel any catches. So if you have a, a monotube shock and there's been a rock dent um, that's potentially hitting the piston on the way through, that's an issue. Uh, twin tube shocks aren't as susceptible to a dent in the body uh, hampering the movement of the piston. Um, but if, you're, if your bearings look good, you don't feel any catches when you're stroking the shock all the way down. You've spun the, sh the shaft on the way out. The shaft doesn't appear to be bent. Um, that's about as good as you're gonna get for checking it without a dyno. And I will say you'll typically catch 75% of your issues by doing that. Um, normally if the shock has seen some trauma, you'll feel a dead spot. Um, something just won't feel right traveling it through its range of motion by hand. So that's how we would check uh, a shock. If you have a torsion bar car and you don't have a torsion bar dyno or you don't have anybody near you, um, torsion bar dynos aren't as common. Um, a good way that the old timers would check torsion bars is once they ran a bar the first time, <clears throat> back at the shop on flat ground, um, block the car, set it on the ground as it's race ready without the shocks hooked up and measure your four corner heights. Note those in your notebook. Every week, do the same thing. You gotta have the same size tires on the car. Check it in the same spot in the shop. If all of a sudden one week a, a corner is sagging and you double check that you're, um, you blocked it correctly and one corner is getting lower than the other one, that's a good indication that you have a torsion bar going bad. Um, Shocks and torsion bars, you should be able to get 20 to 25 races out of them before you get a shock freshened and you upgrade to a new torsion bar. Um, I've said this before, but torsion, bar, torsion bars are a wear item, just like a tire. It's just uh, harder to see when one wears out. Um, but a fresh set of torsion bars sometimes will take a car that's kind of been numb to changes and, and you've been struggling, it'll waken it up. So um, I always start the season with new torsion bars. I <clears throat> mark the first date that they go into action and every week when I grease them, you put a little mark on them so you know how many nights you have on those bars. All right, so I hope that video that we just filmed was helpful for you guys. Um, again, if you have any questions, 
comment. Um, if you have questions that don't pertain to that, um, still comment. We're happy to help. We want to help all of our customers um, and anybody that's willing to put the extra effort into their race team um, go faster. So we're just trying to share our knowledge. That's why I started Monday Morning Quarterback 169 episodes ago. Um, I don't know how many years it's been, four or five years now. Um, the previous 168 of these are cataloged on our YouTube page. Really easy way to find them. If you're just now discovering Monday Morning Quarterback, we're going to be back every Monday, 9 p.m., throughout the entire off season. So get in the habit of checking it out. Um, they'll be on our Facebook page and our YouTube page, and uh, we certainly appreciate you watching. If you can like and share this video, we would greatly appreciate it. Have a good week.